Welcome to the 600 block of Penn Avenue and Art Plus Gallery. My name is Martha Ressler. I'm the director here, and I'd like you to invite you to come on in. Whether you're a first-time visitor or an old-timer, welcome. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot. We are closed due to the orders of Governor Wolf because of the coronavirus. So, I'll see you online. I'll give you a tour that way. Hello. We're back on our website, artplusgallerypa.com. What's new for us is that we have our galleries online. Let's see. Here we go. Check out our new online gallery and store. You can click here or you can click on each of the galleries that we have. I'll go to the main gallery for our March and April show. This is what's actually in the gallery right now, but of course you can't get to it. Each of the images is depicted here, that's in the gallery. And what you can do is click on any one of these and get a larger view of it. This is called Elegant Affair with a March Hare, great name, by Karen Weber, inspired by busy springtime rabbits. Coupled with the famous March Hare from Alice in Wonderland, this painting sprung out of my brush. And here she has both the framed view and just the image view. Well, let's see what else we can find. How about, Oh, this one calls to me, those clouds. Isn't that beautiful? It's called Scattered Above and Below by Robert Seaborn. A framed original, it has the, the sizes. The relationship of land to the atmosphere is delicate. Farms contribute to that balance, but that relationship is in peril as more farms are bought and divided for residential use. Well, this one really speaks to me because I live in a rural area. What would happen? I add this to my cart and look how easy it would be to check out, buy with Google Pay, um, pick it up or request curbside pickup um, right there. In fact, since this is speaking to me, let's hear what Bob Seaborn has to say about this piece. Well, thank you very much, Martha, for choosing my painting. Let me tell you a little bit about it. It happens to be a great landscape that is all about the clouds above and the earth below. It happens to be about that relationship that we have with agriculture, where we sow the seeds in the land, whether it be for crops, even for planting trees that will at least release oxygen into our atmosphere. It is also about the relationship of the sky above, which gives us nourishment and the ground uh, nourishment through the rain that comes down from those clouds. I'm glad you like it. I hope you're going to be thrilled with where you hang it in your house. Uh, why don't you take them back to the website and guide them along a little bit more. All right, we're back at our main page here. Let's take a look at the Earth and Crisis. This was a joint effort by Berks County Art Galleries to respond to environmental issues and then it has been enlarged to respond to the Earth in crisis with the pandemic. This is the 50th anniversary of Earth Day, so we wanted to participate in this, in this exhibition. Here's actually one of mine. Um, it's called Men Stitch and Reuse. I'm a fiber artist, so I responded by uh, emphasizing the importance of recycling and reusing. But what else do we have here? Here is one of Jay Wrestler's The Love Bugs. Now, I wonder how he did this and what it means. Maybe he could tell us. Hi, this is Jay Ressler. I'm particularly pleased to be part of the Earth in Crisis exhibit that Art Plus Gallery has put online. I have four pieces in the show. The one I want to talk about today is The Love Bugs. It's a composite photograph that 
has a number of different layers. The central image is a couple of butterflies feeding off of a wild sunflower. Behind it in the background is some banding, which was created by glitching an image of computer code. There's also hidden in the photograph a random love letter downloaded off the internet, uh, a love letter between two individuals. Uh, and my intent with this, this piece was to uh, depict the distress that nature and our society face today as a result of a, society, a system based on profits before human needs and before the needs of nature. It's also a piece about hope uh, because if we listen to what nature has to tell us about the distress that's under, uh, restoration is possible. We just have to move forward in that direction. Okay, we're back to our main gallery and let's take a look at the third gallery that we have online. This is Greg Didyoung's Appalachian Trail Show. He is a relatively new member of our gallery, although he's contributed so much in the brief time he's been with us. And he hiked the entire Appalachian Trail, was a through hiker 10 years ago. His photography, he prints on wood so that you get a sort of a subtle uh, addition of the wood grain. Can you see that? in the image, which gives it additional interest, depth, and and um, texture. But let's let Greg tell you more about his show. Hey everybody, this is Greg Didyung. I'm an artist at Art Plus Gallery. I'm currently in the featured exhibit wing, featuring uh, my uh, work of the Appalachian Trail. What I do is photographs and digital compositions that I then apply into wood it's a look and a process that I developed and it was a unique way to show uh, the Appalachian Trail, which I hiked in 2010, uh, kind of show people the 14 states you go through. This is a picture of the bronze plaque at the southern terminus. Next we go on to a water break. This is the first couple that I actually found and they were sitting quietly filtering out their water. As we continue on, we get to the famous Smoky Mountains. And as you can see here, it's absolutely beautiful, living up to its name. It's the mossy, dense, and misty Great Smoky Mountains. And this piece is called Trail's Edge. This is probably one of my most popular and uh, one of my favorites, too. On this picture, it looks like the trail is going off to the edge. You can see the blaze right there under the side. I just love the way that the little puddle mirrors the lake down in the valley below. Uh, this is when Bones and Rio, two pretty famous hikers along the trail, Pick me up for the July 4th weekend. Also, in this little uh, weekend rendezvous, I took probably the most famous picture of my life here, and it's Slit's cat. When I got to his house, he said, hey, do you need a beer? Sets one down, wakes this poor cat up. <laughs> I snapped the picture right at the right time. We keep hiking on to Maryland. What I like about this picture is just how the water kind of wraps around his body. This piece is called the break in the tunnel because it's called the green tunnel. You don't get a lot of views especially in Pennsylvania. So when you get a view in Pennsylvania, you cherish it. So that's us kind of looking, seeing the town, seeing Duncannon. Here I poke fun at New Jersey, and I call this the Jersey Boardwalk, uh, just navigating a swampy section of trail. But it was actually a very fun um, and flat state. <laughs> Continuing on from New Jersey, we're going to New York. And this piece is called My Favorite Flower is a Wildflower. From New York, we go to Connecticut, this one's called Privy Path. Again, like I said earlier, the AT is often called the tunnel. You can kind of really see that in this picture of the tunnel. This one's called Following the Blazes. This is actually a road crossing, so it kind of has a little more markings than you would normally see. Um, but it kind of shows you the, the markings, how you navigate your way across 2,000 miles. There's 165,000 blazes, and this is one of them. This piece is called Reflections. At this point in the trail, you're starting to know who you are, you're starting to get towards the end, you do a lot of reflecting about the hiking that you've done, um, and that's literal and figurative in this piece. I just really enjoyed Vermont. I enjoyed not only the terrain, but the people. Uh, this one is called the Green Mountains, and these decommissioned fire towers can kind of show you you get above the canopy, just almost untouched wilderness. We continue to New Hampshire from Vermont. Uh, this one's called the Mount Washington Cog. You can climb and drive your way up. 
Um, but this is probably the coolest. This is the Cog Railroad. And then we get to Maine, which is the last state and the wildest. This is called Northern Terminus. This is the end of the Appalachian Trail. It's Mount Katahdin. You get a beautiful view of it. This is on top of the mountain you just saw. And it's pretty much sucked in by clouds most of the time. But for a few seconds, when I summited, the clouds broke. I was able to snap this picture. So that's my uh, Appalachian Trail exhibit. Really hope you guys enjoyed it. All the pieces uh, for the exhibit are for sale. Even if they were sold, I can reprint them. The wood grain will be different. Each piece is unique. But every sale that we make benefits the Appalachian Trail Museum in Pine Grove, Pennsylvania. And I kind of really hope you guys support and your interest during these uh, difficult times. Thank you and keep enjoying art. All right, we're back at the main gallery. What I'd like to show you additionally is some other features of the gallery. We are, in addition to selling art and helping our artists in that way, we help the community as a whole by being a nonprofit 501c3 organization. We call this our art reach um, through scholarships and other programs. And I would like to have Russ Slocum, who is our Co who is my co-director um, for the gallery, tell you, there's Russ right there, um, tell you a little bit about our outreach program. Hi, I'm Russ Slocum, co-director of Art Plus Gallery. Now, if you just look at the art on our walls, we look like a regular gallery, but you're only seeing half the picture. In the Art Reach section, you'll find the programs and events that earn us the status of a 501c3 nonprofit. They all start with our mission to promote art appreciation and participation throughout Berks County in general and among students in particular. How do we do this? Well, each year we offer a $500 college scholarship to a student pursuing a fine arts major. We bring in undergraduates with summer interns to give them real-world experience in the gallery business. Our annual Nature of Noldy student art contest reaches thousands of kids throughout the county. Once or twice a year, we offer our whole featured exhibit area to groups like the Art Students at RAC or the Olivet Boys and Girls Club. Our annual Plein Air West Reading Art Competition brings together 50 artists from Pennsylvania and the surrounding states. We even produce a free map showing everywhere in Berks County that you can find and buy original artwork, and not just ours. I could go on, but you should too. Next, I'd like to show you the part about our individual artists. Each artist has their own page or website um, within our website. Here you can see Susan Graybert's work, for example and see details of each one of these beautiful paintings. You can also click on the artist's profile, see a picture of the artist and a little description of what she does. Finally, I'd like to tell you how you can help the gallery. There is a Friends of Art Plus program, um, some of whom are actually artists themselves and have a, a chance for some limited um, exhibition opportunities with the gallery. Um, they also help financially by their annual contributions, and they get perks like 10% off of the amounts for the, of their purchases. There's even a donate button. You can actually help the gallery right now in these in this time of difficulty to help us pay our rent by making a donation. Thank you all for visiting with us and this pan pandemic is is inconvenient for some of us, but we need to remember that for, that for many people, it's a matter of life and death. So stay safe, stay home, and keep loving art. <laughs>